In this video, I'm going to give you a comparison of crampons versus micro spikes. Which one should you choose and when should you use them? It's actually more difficult to choose between micro spikes and crampons than you might think for certain situations. And also watch to the end of this video and I'll give you the number one reason why micro spikes are actually way better than crampons. So stay tuned for that. So when you're looking at foot traction, when you're going to icy and snowy locations, what do you choose? I mean, you could simply get your climbing boots, step them on, start walking up the glacier, and of course, that's not gonna work. But what happens when you're hiking on a mountain and you're going great, but then you hit this 50 foot or 100 foot or 200 foot stretch of ice where there's a dangerous run out, like say on Tiwanot in Grand Teton National Park. I've got a link below to my book, uh, the Jackson Hole Hiking Guide that talks about this is that let's say you're hiking up and you're using maybe your light hikers here or even going up in tennis shoes. I see people doing in tennis shoes all the time, but then you see this stretch of ice and the run out is like into boulders and you're gonna die. What do you do? Because obviously tennis shoes will not work with crampons or crampons won't work tennis shoes. I mean, you can put that on all day and that's not gonna work. Or even my, uh, my strap style here, tennis shoes just aren't gonna work with crampons. Now you could put them on and chances are you might get away with it, but then you're walking and then they flip off, which invariably they're going to do. What do you do? Well, that's where uh, micro spikes come in handy. Now, full disclosure, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies and products I'm talking about. I'm just giving you an idea that the choice between micro spikes and crampons is not as easy as you might think. Now, of course, if you're uh, climbing Denali or you're on Elbrus or you know wherever, you're gonna need crampons for this style boot. That's just simply the way it is. My Sportiva Barun says, oh, loved them on Mount Elbrus. And the only thing that's gonna work our crampons work spectacular. There's no other choice. So if you're doing glacier travel where you're going a long distance or climbing a mountain and there's no question of, hey, you know, I gotta have crampons, that's a no brainer. Stay tuned, don't click away. But let me give you a bunch of scenarios where the micro spikes actually work quite well. So consider the situation on Tiwanot where you're climbing up this 12,500 or so foot peak and it's like no problem, but then you hit the glacier and it's 35 degrees slope, give or take, of maybe 40, depending on where you are. And you start crossing, you slide, you will not stop. I mean, if you hopefully you have your ice axe, right? I mean, you, you got your ice axe, you can cross, you have your tinnies or your runners on, you'll probably do okay. But boy, when I have taken the micro spikes, I just throw them in the bag, throw them in a little grocery sack, and then I can simply put the micro spikes, check this out, onto my runners. Hopefully it'll uh, snag. It's actually hard to put them on when they're not on your feet. It's kind of awkward. But I put my micro spikes onto my tennis shoes. I get good traction, no problem. Spikes here. I walk across the glacier. I still have my ice axe ready to go, but I walk across here and all of a sudden I'm not, oh my gosh, slipping and stumbling, praying that I don't slide out of control. Now, if I really start sliding, of course, crampons would be a better choice. I'm gonna be worried about it, but do I want to hike all the way up Tiwanot with this style boot only to do that 100 foot section and then keep climbing? No. No way. I've gone up in my light hikers, these sort of things. I've gone up in my runners. And by using the micro spikes, I have no problem because the micro spikes won't ever flip off your shoe, whether it's this or your boot. I mean, it's such a big difference. Now stay tuned. This is, I'll tell you the most critical thing at the end of the video here. But if you've got this style hiker boot, whether it's a Keen or Sportiva or a Merrill a Moab ventilator even. I've gone up in my Moab ventilators in that same situation. This is where the Venn diagram of clearly crampons, pointless crampons, but that crossing makes it a little more complex. So when you've got boots like this, and I use the XL uh, micro spikes, 
because, oh, twisty turny here, XL Micro Spikes, because my boots are size 12 and size 13, maybe size 11, depending on what it is. But instantly, I've got superior traction that my crampons would just never, ever work safely and confidently on this boot because I've tried it. Where I've, okay, let's just take the crampons and you can check out my anti-bot plates here, my ghetto anti-bot plates. And I put the crampon on and I walk and pfing, yeah, the toe flips right off or the heel comes off with this style boot. So really, the decision between micro spikes and crampons is this. Are you traveling long distance on glaciers? Clearly micro spikes. Are you traveling hard ice for potentially, or uh, clear, sorry, clearly crampons? Are you traveling mountaineering with mountaineering type boots? Of course crampons, absolutely. But hey, I only, maybe I'm hiking in Sierras and I know I'm gonna hit a bunch of snow patches and I don't wanna slide around, get hurt and get wrecked 50 miles from help. Micro spikes, sweet. Crampons, oh, no way. I wouldn't wanna carry these heavy crampons, you know, two pounds of steel with lots of stabby things a long distance. Let's also consider you going and doing a 10 mile long day hike and you're gonna hit this ice field and you know you're gonna hit the ice field. You think, oh, I gotta have crampons, but I only wanna take my super light packs. So you put crampons in here. I mean, <laughs> you might as well just get out your pocket knife, flip that bad boy out and just start slicing your backpack because that's what's going to happen. So instead, that's where I go with the micro spikes because I know I can put the micro spikes in this backpack all day, nothing, I mean, look, check this out. Nothing's gonna happen. I can even put them on my cheeks. See this? Yeah, it's slightly not comfortable, but you know, you put crampons on your cheek, you're gonna have a hole in your cheek. I put crampons in this backpack, it's gonna be destroyed. So that is a huge, huge thing. So the interim, and then also, you're going to want a crampon carrier. Plus the weight differential, in the micro spikes, so if we can get these off here, plus the crampons. I mean, there is no comparison. The crampons are at least twice as heavy as the micro spikes, so that's a consideration too. So you might think, oh, I'll just blow it off, and I won't even take in my ice axe. Bad idea. And I just want some foot traction. Which do I choose? If I'm doing a long distance hike in a day where I've got my light boots or my tennies or runners or whatever. I'll take my micro spikes. I will simply toss them into my backpack. No problem. Toss them in there. And they jangle around. No big deal. But my crampons, they're a much bigger commitment. So stay tuned. I'm almost getting to the point, and the most critical point here. So when you're thinking, oh, okay, I want to go and hike and I might run into some ice and snow and I don't want to slip. If it's super slushy in the afternoon, crossing snow fields is no problem, but wouldn't you much rather have confident traction where you put these on and instead of, whoa, you put these on and there's very little slip as you're stepping on the ice and snow. I just did this a couple days ago. I was on the pass in uh, Jackson Hole between Wyoming and Idaho and I was walking around the pass and it was all ice and it's a 35 degree slope, it's double black diamond, pretty steep. I slapped these on, I was literally wearing this pair of boots. I put the micro spikes on and boop, boop, boop. No problem, no issue. I had the micro spikes off, whoa, because the path was covered in ice because skiers keep going on it, which is normal. And that's the skiers pack that trail down it was slick. I took my micro spikes off to do a video. I'm like, whoa. So that is a big deal. I put the micro spikes on. I walk totally confidently down that trail with zero concern that I'm going to slip, eat it, and slide down and smash myself on a tree. If I had my crampons on, <laughs> no, not going to happen. I'm not going to put crampons on these style boots. I did not need that. And also check this out. Consider here, let's say you've bought some insulated boots like these Danner prong horns. Super nice. Maybe you, you go out hiking and you want some insulated boots or you're hunting and you always hit these icy patches and you're, whoa, well, consider this. 
That, uh, let's see, the front, I already flipped them inside out. <laughs> Let me take that off here. So yeah, consider this, you're out hunting you're, or you're just hiking and you have insulated boots and you're sliding all over the place even though the traction on, traction on the bottom of these danders is great, you are sick of sliding around. You get the micro spikes. Now these are size 13 double E, so it's a little tight. I probably should have gotten something smaller, but I, uh, the 12s didn't fit well. Check that out. Boom, now I've got, cr not crampon level traction, but I've got super confident traction where I can hit icy patches in snow and not be stumbling around and wasting energy. That's a huge thing. You waste so much energy when you're stumbling around. So on insulated boots, micro spikes are the winner. And now for the big moment you've been waiting for, the number one reason to choose micro spikes over the crampons in certain situations is if you stumble and you step on yourself, and I'm sure you've done that where you cross your feet, and if you step, this crampon, it's sharp, I sharpen my crampons, will go straight through the leather into your foot, and exactly. That is the number one reason you might choose micro spikes over crampons is the stumbling factor. I mean, if you, you walking along and you stab your foot, I mean, how many times have you kicked your feet together on ice and snow all the time, you will put this cramp on right through your boot and you will put it right into your foot and then you'll have a very bad time. You'll ruin your boots, you'll ruin your feet and ruin your trip. Compared to with these boots, eh, no problem, you know, no big deal. I mean, it puts, oops, puts a little things in there, but nothing happens. <laughs> these boots, again, they've got the rubber, they're protected. These boots, I step at full force, I will put my crampon right through my boots. So that is the number one reason why I will choose micro spikes over crampons is to make sure that I know it's a short distance, I'm not glacier, I'm not super climbing, I'm just doing regular. I choose micro spikes a lot for that reason. Check out links below to the products I've shown in this video and also check out links in the description to my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost at Windy Corner, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The, cru the Most Crucial Knots to Know, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, The 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, and my shows World Beyond and Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to get more information like this. Thank you very much for watching, and enjoy your crampon and microspiking. spiking.